Hi again, everybody. So this is a continuation on the podcast I did with Spencer. I'm going to show in detail how I find these blogs. And I'm going to show first in this video how to do it manually, uh, which can be a very time-consuming process. It can also be extremely addictive if, if you're good at it. Um, it's important to know how to do this manually. Uh, in the follow-up videos, I will show how to do it, how to automate it a bit more, and then how, to, how I automate it more or less fully. So you can understand exactly how everything works. So in this case, um, to do it manually, the first thing you need is a list of links that are both uh, authoritative and ideally old. Uh, because if the links uh, are old, then there's a good chance of the domains being expired. So in this case, uh, I'm just doing a search on Google for the word blog roll because obviously that's going to have a lot of links. And I'm going down to the to the more search tools and going to the custom range here. And I've put in uh, basically sites that have been up that were updated between uh, 2000 and 2006. And these are the results. I'm just going to click through to this one, uh, which is just a list of links. They're a little bit more recent. It looks like people were updating these three years ago, though who knows when this actual page was updated. Um, so I mean it may have been updated in 2006 and it said five months ago so just keep that in mind. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the URL, I'm going to copy and paste it into Xenu Link Sleuth. So here's Xenu, I had actually already run it but I'll just show you how to do it. Go to check URL, paste it in. Uh, you can remove, you can include, uh, exclude any URLs that begin with say Google or other popular URLs if you find a lot of them. Anyway, you just hit OK and it starts. Before you start it off, though, I just want to show you the preferences uh, that I use for Xenu. Um, pretty much, you can you can just copy this. Make sure ask for password or certificate, or certificate when needed is unchecked, or else you get a ton of pop-ups. It'll slow everything down. Uh, treat redirection as errors. Uh, that's good, uh, especially for finding blog spots uh, and other free hosts. Uh, so just pretty much copy this. The main thing is the maximum depth. By default, Xenu I think loads with something ridiculously high. So this is how deep you want to crawl. Uh, if I just put one in, it'll only crawl the links on that URL that I, that I pasted in. And if I put two in, it'll crawl the links on that URL plus all the links that they linked, that those original links linked to. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, it starts, it does its thing. Uh, this, pr this one took about maybe 15, 10 to 15 minutes, and it checked only 2,428 URLs. Usually I would check um, a list of URLs at a time, and often it can take a couple hours, and I'll get returned maybe 30 or 40,000 URLs. Uh, anyway, uh, when, when it's done, this is just showing the errors. You can hit Control B to go between it, the errors and, the, uh, and all URLs. I export to tab separated file, and then I load up that tab separated file in Excel. So here's what the file looks like. All I did to edit it was I increased the size of this column and I uh, filtered it and then control shift L and then ordered it by status code largest to smallest. Uh, the no connection here just means uh, it, I was running a lot of threads and it, I didn't retry the broken links which you can do in Xenu. Uh, so these are just no connection. Uh, no such host. This is what we're looking for. Error. Status code 12007. So what I want to do is check to see if these domains are available. So we're going to need to do a little bit of uh, cleaning up this list. I'm just going to copy and paste it into a new sheet. Okay, to clean it up, and of course we can make a make row to do this. I'm just going to select the column. I'm going to get rid of all www's, and I'm going to get rid of all HTTP. Okay, next I want to filter out all of the um, subdomains. So by to do that I'm going to use text to columns. I'm just going to insert a few empty columns here so that I don't replace things. I'm going to select the column, go to data and text to columns. And here I'm going to take all the periods. I'm going to create new columns based on that gives you something like this. You can uh, remove duplicates here. Uh, you can then use text of columns on the slashes to get rid of URLs. Uh, and then pretty much what I would do at this point is I would just, let's say, ins insert a column right here. 
and I'll just say equals a1 and period and v1. Okay, and I could take that and I'm gonna just copying it over to all the areas that have uh, just cells in A1 and B1. You, I mean, you can just do this manually if you want, whatever. Uh, but just creates a list of URLs. And you can do the same with ones that didn't have the www before or whatever. And you can combine B1 with D1, whatever. Eventually what you'll get is a list similar to this, uh, which is just a bunch of domain names. You then copy and paste that list into Namecheap or whatever uh, bulk domain checker. So this is not even the full list, just part of the list. Search. Okay, here are the results. So we have a few domains available. Um, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at them in OpenSight Explorer. So copy and paste, uh, in this case watching the wheels paste it into OpenSight Explorer and here are your results. So here on the on the main page, I don't pay much attention to this page. Uh, I will always change uh, pages to pages on this root domain uh, and I'll generally check all links, filter it. Don't pay attention to these top stats over here, that's only to the page. I'll show you which stats to pay attention to. So in this case, we have 25 domains pointing to the root domain, and 17 of them seem to be pointing to this page, which is the www version. I, what you can do is you can you can go through some of the links and make sure that the links still exist. So for example, we know we know this one still exists because we just checked that page. Uh, you could click through on this on this link, and then just view the source, Control U, and do a search for watching the wheels and there it is, the link still exists uh, that's what you want to look at. You, you can check that for a few others to see if it's worth picking up but what we're going to look at, you know, it seems to have real links here uh, it seems to be political or something you can, you can tell sort of the content of it by looking at the anchor text and looking at some of the linking pages it's got a whole bunch of total links here but let's look at uh, top pages so the home page has the majority of the links, um, but it actually does have some pages that have more than just the, the, the domain itself linking to it. Uh, so that's a good sign. Uh, you can also go to compare link metrics. And here we see it has a page authority of 38, uh, a Moz trust of 5.1, and I did explain these metrics already in the podcast, so I won't re-explain them here. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of different data about it. What I really look at is, is the page authority on both the www version and the non www version um, because often there'll be more links uh, to one or the other. And I look at the total linking root domains to the root domain. So right here, 25. And it's interesting to see total links. That gives you sort of an indication of what the page rank will be. Now by just having a link if you go back to the actual links. But just having a link on that page that we saw, which was, I can't remember what it was called anymore, um, but that blog roll, this out campaign, we know this is a PR5 link. Uh, but just having a link there, this domain will, will be a minimum PR3. And if we click back through to this one again, this one doesn't seem to have, ah, here's another example of blog spot. So in this case, because I'm in Mexico, it's automatically re redirecting me to blogspot.com so you want to check a page rank checker if you're outside of the country to see what its actual page rank is. Uh, in this case I'm not really going to do that but you can take a look at some of the other pages, see what the, see what the page rank is, see if the link still exists. In this case it has no page rank. This is If it's green like this it means that's the page rank of the home page. I didn't intend to find an atheism blog. I'm not making any kind of statement here. This is just sort of what popped up on the results. Uh, this is a PR3. So I imagine if you go through it, you'll probably find this will be a PR3, PR4 minimum. So uh, aside from that, I would also check the domain on Ahrefs to see if it has anything uh, that OpenSight Explorer missed. In this case, I'm really only looking at the number of referring domains uh, and looking at the actual backlinks. Um, 
So you can look at the external backlinks here. Okay, so uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of subdomains on this out campaign blog, uh, which is interesting. This is an interesting case. They're probably all also PR5, depending on how they're linked. Um, these could actually be uh, all real PR5s. It really depends on how they're linked. Uh, you can take a look at that, but I just want to show that it's important to look at Ahrefs as well. Uh, they have, I don't think they have a free trial, but they have the free account that allows you to look at make five searches a day or something like that. It may have other limitations, I'm not sure. Okay, so here's uh, who is dot domain tools. I'm just going to look it up to see if it's had any big drops and see how old it is. Um, three drops. Uh, it's not terrible. Not great. Ideally, you want to see only one drop, or but uh, it's probably fine based on the backlinks. It looks like no spammer has touched it, um, and it looks like it's been archived since 2008 here. Though we know it's older than that based on based on the Google search. So I would record all that. I would record the Moz Trust, the potential PR, the number of linking root domains from both Ahrefs and Open Site Explorer. I do it on a Google Doc. I've trained the staffer to do it for me. So you can just record it on a spreadsheet here. Um, Archive.org is the other thing. I'll check to see if there's already content in it, get an idea of what the content was about, uh, put up content similar, or if you feel you want to, you can put up the same content. That's up to you. I'm not necessarily recommending you do that. Uh, I usually add some notes about it as well. So overall, this is, a, this is actually a decent domain, and I found it in whatever the time it took to make this video, probably about 20-25 minutes. And there was another one to check there as well in that list, gamerjoe.net. So we can check that out as well on Open Site Explorer. This one has, let's see, This one has only seven linking root domains and a page authority of 35 and a domain authority of 22. Uh, again, it seems to have most of its links from these different language uh, blog roll. If you actually take a look at that a bit, you can sort of, you can take a look to see how it's actually how these different subdomains are being linked. So let's look for. Okay, so I went to the homepage outcampaign.org to see how, where they were getting their links from. Homepage is PR6, and you can see that it's getting links. It's linking out to all of these different subdomains in different languages, and this is where it's really important to understand how PR works. So you go to Spanish, um, it's a PR5 because it's getting the link from the PR6 homepage, plus it's got all these other links sort of recycling themselves, and I'm sure some of them also have links. And then the Spanish links to the blog roll, uh, somewhere I guess here. And you can see the blog roll is PR5. So actually, every single one of the languages here at the bottom uh, are PR5 links. So in actual fact, this domain is most definitely going to be a PR5. Uh, it will, because it has a link from pretty much, I don't know, I don't want to count them all, but something like you know, 40, 30 PR5 domains. Uh, generally, if you have the, the sort of the rule for PR, is if you have, let's say, a PR6 and you have one link on, from the PR6, uh, everything it links to will become a PR4. If you have uh, three links from PR6s uh, and they all point to the same page, that page will now become a PR5 without any other links whatsoever. And if you have, I believe it's 18 or so uh, links from a PR6, or from 18 different PR6s to the same page, that page will become another PR6. So that's just, uh, I, I can point to a PR chart uh, so people, so you can take a look and understand it. But yeah, this domain will become a PR5 for sure. So in this case, with uh, the first one, watching the wheels in my case, uh, Monstrous 5.1 is pretty decent. I know they're going to be PR5s. I'm just going to pick up both these domains because I know they'll end up being PR5s and I can I can probably flip them quite easily. Uh, and here you go, That's that's basically how it's done. So what I'll do with these sites is 
I will set them up on a on a unique IP and I will redevelop the sites into something similar to what they were before. Uh, in this case it looks like probably both of them I'm not actually they were probably both related to atheism in some way. Um, I didn't do a thorough enough research to know. Uh, I will develop these ones because they will become PR5s and I can sell text links on them perhaps or uh, just flip them later. Uh, feel free if you want to go through the actual that list of links uh, and to use this technique as you see fit. I mean again this I probably did this for no more than 20 minutes and I found two PR5 domains so I'm sure you guys can find a hell of a lot more uh, and I assure you I didn't pre-qualify this search in any way I just I just did it now um, so if you have any questions uh, just leave a comment I went through this pretty quickly again this video assumes that you you listen to the podcast I did with Spencer and I'll include a link to that in the video. I will do a follow-up um, in a couple days, a day or two, uh, that will show how to do this um, using Scrapebox, uh, which really speeds up the process a lot, and also I'll show how I made my own tool uh, that does all of the, basically checks all the metrics for Open Site Explorer and Ahrefs for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.